Welcome to the SQL practice problems video series. This is the, uh, the third video now. Uh, today I'm going to be practicing the intermediate uh, difficulty problems. We saw in the previous video some joint uh, queries, the last couple exercises included um, joining two tables. And I may actually consider that intermediate already, but never mind. Today we are going to continue uh, solving these problems and probably today I'm going to be finishing this uh, video series and continue with my podcast. So let's begin. Okay. Here we go. Intermediate problems. Number 20, categories and the total products in each category. Before doing this, I may like to take a look at the, the repository for this. Wait, there we go. So this is the, the entire list of the commits so far. As you can see, I've been doing one for every exercise. So let's keep it that way. So it's going to be way simpler this way. And let's take a look at the folder structure here. I'm going to be creating a, a new file. Let's use uh, data grid for this. File, create a new one. Okay. Comments. Here. Now, this file is going to be called. Um, intermediate problems, maybe? Okay. Keep using same notation for this. It's going to be camel case. Dot SQL. And there we go. Here. So what are we gonna do here? Let's begin with number 20. This problem is going to be called categories and the total products in each category. So let's see what is required. Okay. It says for this problem, we like to see the total number of products in each category. Store the results by the total number of products in descending order. These are the expected results. And we have a field called category name and then total products. Okay, we continue here. The hint. To solve this problem, we need to combine a join and a group by. A good way to start this is by creating a query that shows the category name and all products IDs are associated oops, with it uh, without grouping. Then add the group by. Okay, let's try that. So first, we are being asked for number the total number of products in each category. Okay, so there is a product, I believe there is a product table here. So let's query that first. Let's query the, the products. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. Not. And. The base. There we go. Okay, we're good. The products, and let's see what do we have here. So here are all the all the products, and I do have here a, ca a category ID. So I guess there must be here a category table here. Let's see what what is in there. That everything from the categories table. There we go. 
Here are the category tables. This is the category ID field. I'm going to be using this with a join. So what the hint is referring to that to solve this problem, I need to combine a join and a goodbye. Okay, a good way to start is by creating a query that shows the category name and all product ID associated with that name. Oops. Uh, got myself lost here. There we go. Okay, we're back. So what I'm going to be doing first, since I already know that these two tables are, uh, are related to each other, I may like to try something here. What if, see? What if we do a join here? We're going to join the categories. I may like to remove the alias here. There we go. Let's this down here. There we go. You can see I do have the first data from the products table and next I have all this data here. The blue zone is the actual category stable information. Maybe this yes. going to need category name first. Get back here. Remove the asterisk. Let's use the category name. And there we go. Now we're getting uh, several entries for every category here. Because remember, this is every one of these rows represents a single product. So what we are going to do now is to group root by category name. And there we go. These are, so, these are all the categories inside uh, our products. But now we're missing the last component. And that is the total products. So here I'm going to do account, account function. And I'm going to send as a parameter the category name. And this is going to be giving me how many rows for every category name do I have? I have 12 categories of name beverages, 12 condiments, 13 confections, and so on. I may like to give this anonymous column a name, so I'm going to be using the as keyword to, to set a name here. So the name is going to be total products. No. And I think we are done here. Okay. Confections 13. Oh, wait. Sort the results by the total number of products in descending order. Okay, let's do that. So, right after the group by, I believe it's before or after, I don't remember. Let's try here. Let's try another by. Other by. Uh, I wonder if I can use total products directly. There we go. We have an ascending order by default. If I want uh, a descending order, I need to use the desk keyword. And there we go. We have descending order of category name by total products 13, 12, then 10, 7, 6, and 5. And that's it. We, we just did it. Okay. Let's uh, record this in the repo. Oops. Okay. But before this, I am still on the master branch. I may like to check what branches. Oh, wait. I only have the master branch right now. So I may like to do a, a checkout to a new branch called uh, uh, 
there may create problems. And there we go. I am on this new intermediate problem branch. Okay, so check the status. I have a new file here. I'm going to add it. Already here. These changes are about to be committed. These changes are staged. So let's commit them. Oops. I wonder more. There we go. This is a commit. Okay. Let's insert. Well, this is the new name of the file anyway. Add solution. There we go. And on to let's see. I already have this. Here we go. And there we go. Add solution 20 categories and total products in each category on intermediate problems.sql. And I wonder if I can find this one here. And as you can see here. I am uh, moving onward from the master branch and creating a new branch and I adding the, the solutions up here. So the git history is going to keep growing, so let's keep moving. Okay, next exercise. Exercise 21. Okay. 21. Total customers per country city. In the customers table. Show the total number of customers per country and city. Okay, they are growing in complexity. So, better results, the name of the country, name of the city, total customers there. In fancy, when rows are, were not included, the total should be 69. Hint, just as you can have multiple fields in the select clause, you can also Add multiple fields in the group by clause. Yes, that's true. Okay. Yes. Total customers per country city. <coughs> there we go. Okay, in the customers table, show the total number of customers per country. Let's make, let's begin with a simple query. Select everything from the customers table. Here we go. So I do have a, a city column here and a country column here. So, okay, let me get this one here, so I can read it better. I don't need to do a join here still. So. It's asking me to show the total number of customers per country and city. So let's try to group up by country first. Group, oh, group by. Root by country. And here we got an, an error because I didn't remove this asterisk and show the country field only. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, I'm going to find myself uh, with the lack of, um, of, of, city, of the city field, the amount of total uh, for country. Try that. Let's continue with adding the city, the city field, and I need to add to the group by this, the new field city here. 
And there we go. We find one city for Argentina is Buenos Aires. In the example of Austria and Belgium, we have two cities here. So this was the second step to basically add a new field, uh, uh, which I'm going to be using for the group by down here. And now I only need to create a calculated field to know how many people are there, how many customers do we have there. For that, I'm going to make account account function. And I'm going to be sending it the city. There we go. The city field here. We have this. See? And for the USA build Brazil Campinas. Uh, I don't think this is fine. This is okay. No. I don't think it is. Oh no, it's, it's, I think it's actually yes. Okay. I'm grouping them by city, so in that case, uh, I'm going to get, uh, like in this example here, USA is going to appear twice, and I'm getting one client for from this place and another client for for another different city here inside the United States, so I guess it's okay. Doesn't look like the original. Keep reading. Total customers. Okay, I just added an alias there. So I'm conforming to the naming conventions here. So let's see. Don't Rosa were not included. The total should be 69. Okay, 69 rows. So I am fine, I guess. Uh, I guess this being ordered by the sending order from the total customers. Okay. So let's add that little order, order by clause. Order by. Wait. Order by. And let's put total customers. It's ordering them in the ascending. Let's do the descending. There we go. Yes, we are we are going to see the same results. Yes. There we go. Okay, so I guess we, we are finished here. It's not it's not declared that uh, I need to order this table in a descending order using the total customers field, but I doing it anyway, so just to see the same result here on the book. Okay. That was exercise number twenty-one. Okay not that hard once you actually think <laughs> uh as anything that is uh, worthwhile doing if you take your time to actually think before doing anything you are going to find yourself uh, with success um, more often than not oh wait test okay. there we go Let's commit this exercise here. There we go. And as you can see, the new branch over here is growing. And when the time comes, I'm going to merge this branch into the master branch. We are going to begin seeing something like this for the new branch, I guess. Let's keep moving then. Okay, let's see. Number 22. Okay. On. Okay. Products that need reordering. What products do we have in our inventory that should be reordered? For now, just use the fields units in the stock and reorder level, where units in the stock is less than or equal to the reorder level. 
nor the fields units on order and discontinue. Okay, store the results by product ID. Here are the expected results product ID, product name, units in stock, and reorder level. Via table, hint. We want to show all fields where the units in stock is less than or equal to the reorder level. So, in the where clause, use the following. Units in stock should be less than or equal to the reorder level. Okay. So, for products that need reordering. So let's begin with a simple query. Uh, I want to query the products table. Select everything from the products table. We are getting this, okay. So around somewhere around here, we have units in stock and units on order, reorder level. There we go. Units in the stock and reorder level. So what do I need? What products do we have in our inventory that should be reordered? For now, just use the fields, units in the stock and reorder level. Where units in the stock is less than or equal to the reorder level. Nor the fields, units in on order and discontinue. Store the results by product ID. Okay, so first, we are going to use only the product ID and the product name. Write that first. Product ID and the product name. Okay, next, we are going to be adding units in a stock and reorder level. we go now we're going to be filtering something here okay where units in a stock is less than or equal the reorder level so we are going to uh, here we are showing everything but we need to actually show everything that is below or equal to this number here so i'm going to be adding a where clause here where units in a stock should be less than or equal to reorder level. There we go. These are the units that I need to actually restock. And the last thing was to sort the results by product ID. I'm going to be an order by clause and the product ID. And that should be done. Okay, let's see. Can three, five, eleven, and six. There we go. That's it for this one. And you can see my my thought process is uh, beginning from something really simple at the beginning, and begin building up uh, upon it. Uh, I'm not trying to to get to the final result uh, in one single step. Because most of the time, I actually just fail if I try that, no matter how much experience I have. I'd rather uh, think out loud, just like, just like I am doing here. And I keep uh, a good pace. Okay, so copy this. And let's add this answer uh, uh, here on the Git repo. Keep... Okay, let's move on. 23. Okay, what now? Products that need reordering continue. Okay, they're not done. Oops. Okay, so what do we need to do? Now we need to incorporate these fields 
units in a stock, units on order and reorder level. This continued into our calculation. We will define products that need reordering with the following. Units in a stock plus units on order are less than or equal to reorder level. Okay. Second, the discontinued flag is false. The expected results are the same thing, just uh, adding the discontinued field and the units on order field. Okay. For the first part of the where clause, you should have something like this. Units in a stop plus units on order is uh, less than or equals reorder level. Okay. So let's do that. So I'm going to copy the previous query. Okay. Okay. So we have the, the units that we need to restock here. Not considering the special, the, the added um, conditions here that I'm going to be adding now. Units in a stock plus units on order are less than. Or, okay, so the first point is basically I'm going to be using units in a stock plus something else. I guess the units on order, I guess uh, the units that I already ordered my provider to provide me and that should be it for the first point so the where clause is going to add these two and then it's going to ask if the the addition of these two values is less than or equal to the reorder level so this may so this query may actually give me uh, less records than the previous one considering the units on order and finally, the discontinued flag is false. Okay. Let's put something down here. And, and discontinued is, I wonder if I don't, <coughs> I wonder if I can do this. Now the syntax is false. Now, how do you nest your server? I wonder how is zero maybe? I don't think we only have two rows here. I oh, know actually it is. It's continuous is zero. So I yeah, I don't really remember. If SQL Server does have a Boolean value, so I was guessing here, but I actually, uh, okay, it's okay, it's discontinuous zero. Okay. Now I just need to add the units on order and the discontinued fields. That should be enough. The units on order is just after units on Here, after units in a stock. Units on order. And finally, uh, it's going to be the discontinued field. There we go. So we have the two. There we go. Yes, this is it. Product ID 13 and 70. <coughs> okay, it looks like it's, it's fine. Okay, next one. Add this to the repo. Let's move on. Okay, 24. Customer list by region. A salesperson for Norwind is going on a business trip to visit customers and would like to see a list of all customers sorted by region alphabetically. However, he wants the customers with no region null in the region field to be at the end instead of the top where you will normally find the null values within the same region. Companies should be sorted by customer ID. 
in the same result. results. We have a table with three fields, customer ID, company name, and region. Okay. okay. Keeping some rows in the middle. Okay. One. And the null value ones at the end. Hint. You won't be able to sort directly on the region field here. You will need to sort on the region field and also on a computed field that you create, which will give you secondary sort for the when the region is null. Okay, first without ordering, create a computed field that has a value. Will sort the way you want. In this case, you can create a field with the case statement, which allows you to do uh, allows you to if then logic. When you want a field that is one, when region is null. Take a look at samples in the section in the SQL Server documentation for case. Note that when filtering for null values, you can't use field name equals null. You must use field name is null. Let's click this. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Okay, let's do the shot. Can I move it? Evaluates a list of conditions and returns one of multiple possible result expressions. The case expression has two formats. Simple case expression compares an expression to a set of simple expressions. Let's, let's watch for some uh, syntax examples. Simple case expression, case input expression. When, I guess input expression can be a field. And when something happens, then the result. I guess the result could be an integer value maybe. That is uh, the one here when the condition is when the field is null, and that may allow me to actually uh, order the the record. Yes. Okay, let's continue reading. Answer for your case expression, then Boolean expression, then result expression. Okay, the syntax is pretty simple here. Um, this may seem a little complicated. But let's just, uh, I may actually copy something here. Okay, first, uh, let's type in title, customer list by region. So as always, I'm going to begin with a simple query. Select the customer list, everything from the customer list. So we get this, okay? And I can actually see that in the region field, I do have several values with the null value, okay? So here, let's get this down here. I may actually, uh, let's add the fields first, so we can remove some of the excess fields. Uh, it's going to be okay. I want to see a list of all customers sorted of by region. Particular, huh? Where you will normally find the null values with the region company ID. So it's not being told, but I only. I only watching here three fields. It's going to be customer ID, company name, and region. So let's do that first. Customer ID. Uh, what else? Company name and region. Here we go. So we are going to be working here. I'm going to replace this region with a case sent with a case sentence. Why? Because if I try to order this, the null values are going to be on top. For example, if I do an order by region, I'm going to get all the, you can see, 
all the null values are going to be on top because the null value comes before the, the letter A. Okay? But if I change this to a number, so in the book is called the if I set instead of null, I change that value for one when the region is null then I may actually reorder this correctly. So now I'm going to replace region with this. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is going to be a, a little complicated here. So let's do this. Case, I'm going to set here the field region. Is this the syntax? I don't remember, let's check case and uh, an input expression so i guess i'm doing fine here and when and the when expression okay okay so i'm going to do this maybe this okay case when region is null i guess i take them here i don't yes and the result expression then one let's see what what it does oh wait i need an else actually because it's a case not so fast and it's optional uh but never mind okay it's optional else you return the actual value of the region uh, okay when region null incorrect syntax near the keyword is where oh here actually okay let's read oh look here's an example actually I wasn't uh, that far behind actually. It only says case. Region is null than one. Else zero. Oh, okay. Well, it's done there. Okay. So I need to remove this. Case. Okay. Case. When region is null, then one. L zero. Okay, incorrect syntax from the. I need to close this. Then zero. Oh, I need a, an end clause here, okay, an end keyword here. Or else the case is still open. So let's let's put it right here. And there we go. Okay. So this anonymous field is going to be used for that one okay, to order. Okay, region. I lost region, so Yes, I should add it again here. Here we go. So the null values are going to be still appearing, yet I want them to be at the bottom. So, okay. What's going to happen is region dot, and uh, it's going to be having a name. Okay, let's try to give it a, a, an alias. Uh, oops, no. I wonder if I can do that. No. Yeah. Okay, here. have a problem now 
I guess I don't. I cannot just just put an alias there. Oh wait. Oh wait. Yeah, I, I I I think I can do this. Let's try again. As is null. There we go. There is an alias here, and I can use this alias down here. I wonder if that's enough. Okay, one, zero. So I guess I may revert the order. Let's order first by is null and then by read. There we go. There we go. So all the regions are on top and the null regions are on bottom. And I'm using the is null alias here. Then I order by region. There we go. So, okay, we're done. Was a little compli complicated, but uh, but I got a really good hint that uh, up here. Customer list by region. Add this to the repository. Let's move on. And you can see the answer is not coming directly into my, into my mind. So I actually have to ask myself a lot of questions. Uh, customer list by region. Oh, no. Okay. Let's move on. 24. No. Done. 25. High, high freight charges. Some of the countries we ship to had very high freight charges. We like to investigate some more shipping options for our customers. Be able to offer them lower freight charges. Return to the three ship countries with the highest average freight overall in descending order by average freight. So they, they mention average. This is a, a, an aggregate function. Better results. Ship country. Average freight. And we'll be using the orders table and using the freight and ship country fields. Okay. And you will want to group by ship country and use the ABG function. Don't worry about showing only the top three rows until you have the grouping and the average freight set up. And okay, let's not. Uh, you should have something like this select shift country average freight equals to average freight run orders goodbye shift country and order by average freight in order now you just need to show just the top three rows well this is basically it why not Okay, let's let's do it uh, ourselves anyway. The twenty-five high freight charges. Oops. Twenty-five. Oops. Charge. Okay. We're going to be using the orders table. So let's begin with a simple query. Select everything from the orders from the orders table. We had something like this. Okay. What else? We are going to be showing ship country and average freight. Let's move this down here. Let's show the field ship country. <coughs> okay now we are going to begin using the average function abg is the average and what's the name of the field worry 
and using the fright right there we go okay show me the average value of the fright field for every country i'm going to be needing to to group by the ship country or else i'm not going to be able to execute this query here ship country there we go so this is the average value okay let me add uh, an alias here an alias is going to be called uh, average okay there we go now what uh some of the countries we'll have to investigate some more shipping options often lower friends return the three ship countries with the highest so let's order this by the highest value to the lowest order by average fright in a descendant manner so here we go so austria ireland and the usa are the highest value average fright values so i need to in sql server yet this is not a regular SQ, uh, standard sql i may use the top the top three rows and that may be it yet this is this only <coughs> this this here top three is going to show me only the top three rows on this particular query yet this is not um i am afraid that this is not the uh, standard sql so i wonder if it's i don't think this is uh I'm not really a fan of not universal solutions. So let me think here for a second. That may be just enough. So let, let me think. Okay. If I want to limit just for three, for the first three records, how could this be done? not using the top three okay let's check the book for uh for a hint average fright okay i didn't know you can actually do this okay from order by ship country or the by the top three uh, I got to Google that that's definitely it. So, okay so the first entry is for the transact SQL this is for SQL server only uh, syntax so i only type top and the expression that's it. it it may even be a percent nice uh, this only works on transact sql aka uh, sql server see some examples here uh, create table insert some values and here it's going to only show one record here table how do I do this in a standard SQL? So here we go. On a standard SQ, on SQL server is using top. On my SQL syntax, we use limit number. Oracle syntax. I, I believe that this is this is not uh, a standard SQL thing, so I guess I'm just doing uh, doing okay doing it this way. I don't remember if limit actually a standard or not, so I'm not going to use it. So let's get back to top. 
My case I use in SQL Server anyway. Okay. And okay, I'll be done with it. Austria, Ireland, and USA. Okay, that's it. Okay, let's move on. Next, 26 high freight charges 2015. We're continuing on the question above on high freight charges. Now, instead of using all the orders we have, we only want to see orders from the year 2015. Okay. So I guess this is going to be basically the same query. Yet I'm going to be using a where clause by unlimiting the date. This is not uh, working with dates is not as simple as you may actually think. You want to see that. And you need to add a where clause to the query from the previous problem. The field to filter on is order date. Hint. And filtering on dates, you need to know whether the date field is a date time or a date field. Order date a date time or date field? That's a good question. Okay. So first, I'm going to uh, add the word clause since that is the easiest thing. Okay. New query. Twenty six. I free charges to thousand fifteen charges fifteen. It's basically the same query, so I go to copy and paste everything. Uh, right after the from clause, I'm going to add a where clause. The order order date. I can see here that it is actually a date time field. So, how I'm going to be asking this? Where order date is from 2000. I cannot do this. So, this is not going to work. I already know that. Okay. Uh, it executes, but it's not doing what you think it's going to do. I need to extract the year value and compare to 2015. So let's convert. I guess I can do this. Now, how do I extract the year uh, in SQL Server? Okay, let's. There we go. Thank you, Google. Uh, SQL Server do have seems to have a year function. Okay. Okay. Pretty simple. So I guess the year function is going to require a parameter, and I should get a, a date there, and that's it. Let's try that. The year function and it's asking for a date, type date. I wonder if this is actually going to work. Seems to be working actually. Okay, it looks like it's done. Austria, Switzerland, and France. Austria, Switzerland, and France. Okay, seems like it works. I actually surprised it actually works <laughs> that way. Okay, let's add the answer to the repo. There we go. Let's move on. 27. High fried charges with between. Another incorrect answer to the problem above is this. The letter tree should come to be from others. Everything seems to be the, the same. 
Uh, here is using a between the weird thing that is actually creating some kind of value here. I may think that the first thing here is the year, the month, and the day, and 2015, December 31. If you actually want to do this, I would recommend that you just add a single digit to the year value here. Instead of using 2015, uh, December 31, I will use, in my preference, I will use 2016-01-01 again. Because if you do this, the actual 31, December 31 day of 2015, is not go it's not going to be taken uh into consideration if there had been orders on this day those orders are not going to be considered inside this between clause so yeah i know it sounds weird but just just trust me on this one the probably that's why it's incorrect actually order by average fried the sand Notice when you run this, it gives Sweden as the ship country. This is wrong, it should be France. What is the order ID of the order? Okay. I, th I think I just solved it. Out. No expected results this time. So we're looking for one specific order ID. In between a statement is inclusive. That's a good uh, thing to say about it, actually. Uh, this sentence here explains everything I just talked about. Why isn't showing the orders made on December 31? And yeah, it's just because of that. Because if you only set the date, the time to be used is not going to be the end of that day. It's going to be the beginning of that day. That means that the, the actual time used on this query is going to it's going to be this date the problem is that the time of this day, uh, of the day use is going to be zero the zero hours zero minutes zero second it's not going to be 23 hours 59 minutes and 59 seconds whatever no so considering that uh, I guess I could just copy all this previous query Twenty-seven. Hey, okay, high fright. I, 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 I'm quite annoyed that I cannot just copy this. No, I, I can actually copy you. What? What happened? Uh, Okay, Kendall, thank you. Let's format this a little bit. Uh, I don't really like how, how this is typing. Fine. Let's see if this works. Okay. So here, what I may like to do is this. Just copy this same date. Just add a new year and be done with it. Here we go. Tina, Austria, Belgium. Wonder if I'm missing. <coughs> Argentina, Austria, and Belgium. In Austria, Belgium is the same thing. Okay, let's read. Now we're looking for one specific order ID. We then have to
getting something uh, I think been something wrong here. I just copy the code though. It will be working. I'm getting Argentina, Austria and Belgium. Okay, so here I, I'm having a, an issue here with the book. So the first query that is in blue, the letter, is showing me a value here for Italy. And the second one that I type in with a different uh, end date, giving me a different value here. 29.7 for Italy. Up here, getting even more weird. Italy getting 31. And here, getting less. This is supposed to be. Okay. Let's make an experiment here. This is not code I type in, but I believe this must be all right. Oh no way, it's, it's average. Yeah, it, it makes total sense actually. Uh, it's okay, it's, it's fine. It's average. It may be even less because it's including another day. Okay, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so it's going to give me different results. The right one should be the, the one below. There we go. So this one is including, uh, I, I set the, the last, uh, the end date as uh, January 1st of 2016, but in reality, it's not going to take into consideration this day. It's going to consider it the entire uh, 31 December 2015 as the last day. Oh. Thing is that it's showing me different values. I don't, see, I don't see France here. Anyway, I just copy and pasted the sample code, so not really my fault, I guess. The data may be changed, may be uh, different from what. Uh, the author of the book was using at the time. Uh, let's just move on, okay? That order, okay. I already know my my thing here. Oh, I'm right, I guess. I, this. I wonder what happens when I copy from the lab. Going on. Ah. There is a lot of junk on the bottom. Eight tabs. I just hate them. Never mind. I'm copying. Even high fry charges with between. There we go. <coughs> Oops. Okay, let's update this. Let's add the repo. There we go. Let's move on. Uh, what does this have? 27. Okay. 26, oh, I have 28. High fried charges last year. Same thing. For last year. Okay, what do we need to do? We're continuing to work on high fried charges. We now want to get the three shift country with highest average freight charges. But instead of filtering for a particular year, we want to use the last 12 months of order data using as the end date the last order date in orders. It's basically the same thing here. 
or something really similar. Wait, not this one here. It's using between. I, I don't know, dude. I'm just going to copy the previous one. <coughs> there we go. So we are getting three ships. Okay, let's execute this one. So instead of using um, the order date equal 2015, instead of using 2015 directly, here this may be replaced by another expression that gives me a year from the current date last 12 months I guess I do not use between here for order date between here is where I need to think the first date is going to be my current date Current How do you get the, your current date? Maybe a date? Date function? Or a yet date? Oh, there is a yet date. I'm going to read the documentation for that because I don't really remember. Yet date. And get date function here. Get date, there is a function. Okay. Date part year. What? What does get date do? Yes. Huh? It returns a date a database date timestamp. Okay, it samples. I really hate when the sample includes another thing upon the uh, why? Okay. They did get date. What does it do? It returns the actual date. Uh, oh, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't uh, align to 22. Just use it like as it is. No parameters required. Okay, let's try that. Uh, it's going to be between my... Now, uh, this is going to be the end date, maybe. Get date minus. I wonder if I can add or subtract uh, a, a time period to this. Maybe there is a, a, a date add function. There is a date add function. Okay. Date part months a number of months and the current date okay so this is going to be my my start date okay between okay the date part is going to be month the number the 12 and the get date so this is going to be between all this is going to be my starting date okay and the current date okay it doesn't show anything see why okay so maybe i need to swap these values here I'm not really sure, but let's try that. No, it's the same thing. When order day is between get day returns a timestamp. I guess I need to convert this. They add. Oh wait, no, I add in. Okay, never mind. Because there is no, 
there's nothing. I am 2019 actually. Okay. Uh, I guess. May create a, an artificial date here. Okay, I know what to do. I guess it's actually, I think it's working. I'm not sure. And we want to use the last 12 months of order data using that uh, as the end date, the last order date order. Filter for a particular year. D, 12 months of order date using as end date. I think I actually find here. Okay. Because this is my current date between. Okay. Of this. Let's get it back how it was. I'm not going to receive any date item. But the results. Maybe I'm not reading this right. On the high freight charger, we now want to get. Three ship countries get the highest average freight charges. To start filtering for a particular year, I want to use the last 12 months of order data. Uh, I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah. Using as the end date, the last order date. Yeah, I'm doing something wrong. The end date is going to be the order date, the last. Okay. Uh, Going to be let's remove this for the time being doing something something and the order date going to use a max order date and this is going to be my end date the last order date and here Oops. There we go. I cannot do this actually. Not order at or it is. I may need to yeah, select max order day from orders. I need to get the date one year before this last order. Here simple select a statement to subtract one year from the last eight order. The add function for this within your suit query you can create a bot. Like ah, here is the answer actually, okay. The date add. Ah, oh, I'm doing something wrong here. Date add y y I guess is a year minus one year to uh okay to this date. Okay, nice. So basically, let's copy this. What I need is okay. Uh, I wonder if this actually works just as it is. Was not. Having cross or is a select. Hmm. Okay. I need to add this field here. Group by clause. Okay. An aggregate may not appear in the where clause. Oh yeah. Gonna do this where clause. Uh, in the example here, it's actually a separate, uh, actually a separate query. Let's try it out. Sing single. There we go. So this is the last date. Okay, from a year from this, what I need. Oh no, wait. This is actually. Uh, the this is actually the the beginning date, the start date, and the end date should be max order date. 
However, I cannot do that. Uh, I can actually, uh, let's see. I cannot use aggregate functions inside where clauses. Do I? I may fix my problem here really quickly. Uh, declaring a couple of variables. I don't think, I, I guess that that may be considered uh, start start date date going to be equals there we go all this and and instead of using this i may just use start date and this may be the end date i should do a declare down here this is going to be equals to this function here so if I run this, get my result. Oh, valid column name order the. Oh wait, there we go. Okay, let's try again. Valid column name. Where I'm using order the valid column name order date where the date does exist between ah uh, wait this is a, a order day in the orders a day time so let's use day time too or the definition I guess that may be it maybe no valid column name date the the date mean no Is there oh wait no I'm really wrong here here was a let here I I am out of context here there we go it here but it I got a select excuse me go three four one okay and I one we go here the same select max order date so here is your expression and let's try again getting me a mistake error here okay let's think select uh, a day at orders okay that's fine and date you know what i can actually move this here declare it first get my end date here running i'm missing here from the orders table forgot about that so yes this is going to work there we go working so far the second one I may remove all this. I may remove all that. Just use my end date value. I'm going to remove. Yes, I'm going to remove one year from this date. I'm going to get my start date. That should be working, I guess. Let me see. 
Oops, there we go. And that's it. Well, I'm using variables here. I don't know if this may be considered cheating. I think so. Because I may say that this is actually refactoring. I can read this way better at trying to get this inside this thing here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check if this is actually all right. Ireland, Australia. Uh, where? Ireland, Australia. That's the sign. 28. 28. Okay. Ireland, Austria, and USA. Ireland, Austria, USA. Okay, the value seems to be fine. Okay, so I guess we should move on, I guess. I'm going to check this one later. Just to be sure. Okay. Let's just save it as it is. It's actually working. But in order to run all this, I need to actually select the declare statements as long with the select here. So basically, uh, I may actually believe that I can move this directly here and the end date, swap it by this too. Obviously, removing the end date uh, here too and do this. Well, it's working right now, so let's not overthink it and move on. It actually works. Okay. There we go. Okay, 29. Employee order detail report. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay. Employee. Employee order detail. Okay, what are we gonna do? We are doing inventory and need to show employee and order detail information like the below for all orders. Sort by order ID and product ID. Okay, inspector results. It's going to be employee ID, last name, order ID, product name, and quantity. Okay, hint. You'll need to do a join between four tables, displaying only those fields that are necessary. That's it. It's a, it's a join with more than two tables. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So I guess I'm going to be needing uh, employee order detail information. Okay. So I'm going to be using the employee table. The orders table for the order id the product table and i wonder what the for the order table is going to give me the header of the order maybe there is a, a detail table for the order now let's check it out those are the four tables and uh, let's check out the names of the tables employees orders and order details and the products table okay so we are going to do this first the simple query select and i'm going to need the employee id and the last name employee id and the last name from the employees table now when i'm doing uh, joins that involve a lot of tables or simply a lot of fields to keep things simple i actually use um, aliases so here i'm going to be aliasing the i'm going to rename this for this query the employees table as the e table so now let's go into the join join i'm going to be using order 
the other stable it's actually helping me a lot here okay it's going to be joining the order stable it's going to uh, create an alias for the order stable it's going to be called O. So, and here is going to do the join the, in the employee stable the id the employee with the order stable with the id of the employee so far so good so now after i did that join i can actually cast the name of the order id field and the product name well that's coming so here the order id can be called uh employee id ah well since employee id uh, it sits on both tables in the orders table and the employees table the database engine doesn't know which one i'm referring to up here so what i'm going to do is use one of the one of the tables um, i'm going to be using the employees table and that should be it there we go we have the employee the last name and the order id I'm missing the product name and that comes from the product table. So I'm going to be adding another join with the product table. Now this is going to be an alias here as P on actually I should uh format <coughs> all this like this. And the condition is going to be that the orders table dot uh, the orders table is not related to the products table. Now let's uh, the products table is related to the order detail. Yeah. So let's first do the orders details table and the alias is going to be od for the orders detail on orders table dot order id is going to be equals the orders table dot order id now i can actually oh wait now the order id table is ambiguous now so let's say okay the order table order id field that should fix it there we go now since i join the order table order details i guess uh, the order detail is going to give me the quantity i guess okay dot quantity there we go but now i'm missing something here uh i guess right after that let's try to do a join for the products table and now that i've been joining the order details uh the the inter the ide is helping me make the join here okay let's do an s here and, and the product id there's no product id here there we go it works now let's add product name comma there we go we have the joining of four tables that i just ignore the relationships between these tables too so never mind <coughs> okay let's see oh wait i need to order by order id and product id well that's simple at the end an order by clause uh order id product id order id um product id there we go here are all the the order id so all these records belong to a single order to a single last name employee here and here are the products and the quantity okay nice really like it but that's it for this one let's add it to the repo uh-huh if insert let's move on 
Number 30. Customers with no orders. At first. <coughs> okay, what do we do here? To do. Uh, there are some customers who have never actually placed an order. Show these customers. Get the results. Customers underscore customer ID. Orders underscore customer ID. So I guess uh, the author is uh, alias in the fields, adding the name of the table where these fields are actually are actually coming from. So in this case, uh, in the single table. There are two fields that are named the same thing, so I need to alias them differently. Okay, so now I'm going to place an order, so it's customer. customer ID and orders customer ID. One way of doing this is to use a left join, also known as a left outer join. Hint. Select customers underscore customer ID is equal to customers dot customer ID. Okay. Orders underscore. This is our simple aliases with a, an expression kind of notation here. From customers, left join orders on orders dot customer ID. This is a good start. Shows all the records from the customer's table and the matching records from the order's table. However, we only want those records where the customer ID in orders is null. You still need a filter. Okay. So we are basically going to do a simple join here. I'm going to type my own. So let's see. Run customer. Okay, let's do it. Let's begin with a simple query here. Let uh, customer ID and this is going to be called. Let's let's begin with showing everything from from the customers table. Okay, now we are going to begin adding an alias here. T. And I'm going to be joining the orders table. This is my start. So now I can say customers table dot ID, customer ID is going to be named as what was it? Customers underscore customer. Customers underscore that's the notation ID. So this is my first field. There we go. Now the second field why is not doing it? Oh man. Hey, he's doing that. Never mind. Okay, the second field is going to be order dot order dot customer ID as first the score customer ID. What happened? Oh wait, the comma here. We go. Okay, so far so good. It's going to show me exactly the same thing, except that when there is a null, I'm going to. Well, in this case, I'm doing a, a, an inner join, so it's not showing me the nulls. I need to add the left keyword here. 
There we go. Now I should be able to see nulls. Let me look for them. Let's order them, maybe. Uh, show this customer. Uh, the F I S S I Paris. Where? Let's try this first, and here you can see the null. But I'm not going to do this actually. The orders where? There we go. Where is the orders? I can use here. Order. Maybe. No. Can I do that? Because orders underscore customer ID doesn't exist yet. That sits at this point. Uh, yes, I can do this. Orders. Yes. There we go. So here, I should be able to use the alias that I created here, down here. Never mind. So basically, what I'm asking for is do a left join. So these couple rows already exist with me not using them. Not using them. Yes. Now, here I'm not filtering anything. So I should be able to find. Oh, yes, I know how. Order by. Uh, let's order by this. Order by this and remove this line here. I should make this easier for me to find. The top, we can see that I have the two null values here. And right after that, those two null values, everyone else. So it's already ordered. So what I'm going to be doing here, if I remove this comment, I'm going to be filtering uh, for all the rows which orders underscore customer ID is null. I do this, there we go. And those are our customers that are that aren't actually customers. Because they haven't bought anything. Okay. We should send someone from sales there to do some of the actual sales job there. Oh wait, what what happened? We then Oh no! I'm going to need to amend something here. Nah, mm. never mind. Type it. Get the log. One line. Add solution to inter. I'm gonna have to amend that. Don't remember how. Okay. I mean, a man, press enter. <coughs> no more parameters. There we go. Okay. Okay. So here I'm going to insert the title here and that's it save it and let's close this that should be it there we go add solution to tier T customers with no orders on oh, well. we're doing great there we go. Thank you. Let's move on. What do we need now? 
31. Customers with no with no orders for employee ID four. Pretty much building up from the previous one. Customers with no orders for employee ID four. One employee, Margaret Peacock, employee ID 4, has placed the most orders. However, there are some customers who had never placed an order with her. Show only those customers who had never placed an order with her. But the result. Okay. End. Building on the previous problem, you might incorrectly think that you need to do something like this. Okay. Order for order customer ID is null. And order employee ID is 4. Notice that this filter was added in the WHERE clause. And orders employee ID equals 4. However, this returns no records. With outer joins, the filters on the WHERE clause are applied after the join. Uh, so that means that actually I need to do the filtering inside the join clause. With outer joins, the filters on the WHERE clause are applied after. So I guess I should move this section here. I should move it uh, with an ant right up here. Maybe. Let's try that. Let's build on the previous one. This works just fine. However, it's going to be on the left join. Let's build on here and let's add an, uh, another addition here and uh, ID equals four. There we go. That's it. That was actually a good hint. I will do actually that. Uh, I will move this. The word clause, I will see nothing. That was actually a good hint. Okay, let's check out the values. Says Davis, may be ordered in some way. However, there are some customers. Okay. Is not ordered by anything. That's that's the last problem. Oh my god! No, fine. Perhaps I should just do this without order. Scans, Dumont, Fisa, friend. A lot of people. They service. It's not order here. Friend, cons. I guess it's fine. Just not order in way here. Customer A. Okay. Cons, do one visa, friends. Okay. Fine to me. 16 records. Doesn't say how many are they. Sixteen records. So I guess I'm doing this right. So this was a really good hint, actually. 
I would easily done this the wrong way. Doing this and show no records. Yeah. This hint just saved me a lot a lot of time. Notice that this filter was added in the where clause. However, it returns no records. With outer joins. It's even is is I don't remember doing this. Never mind, thank you. With outer joins, the filters on the where clause are applied after the join. So that means that I'm not going to see anything. Because I need to apply the filter uh, during the join, not, not after. Okay. Okay, never mind, it's, it's fine. That's, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, let's add this to the repo. And seems like that, that, was, it. that was it. Yeah. Never mind. Don't mind me. Okay. Let's take a look at the git lock. Take a uh, git lock. One line. Path. Okay. So I am on the intermediate problems uh, branch. Uh, so now let's merge it into the master branch. So first, let's clear all that. Let's check out to the master branch. There we go. Now let's hit merge the with the option of no. Uh, fast forward and the target branch to be merged into the master is going to be intermediate problems oh i did something wrong okay. I don't remember Okay, the no ff lag prevent git merge for fast forward. That's fine. Uh, what's the syntax? Like? Yeah. Uh, don't remember. Okay, let's see. We have Google. What's the syntax again? Uh, git commit, check out. Ah. Oh, never mind. Just need to swap the, the option with the. Okay, it wasn't that, it wasn't that bad. So I'm going to swap this. Name repository problem. No, branch is all intermediate problems. No fast forward. Oh, wait, I missed this. Branch intermediate problems. No fast forward. What? Okay, fine, I guess. There we go. It's done. So let's show the the git log again. Here at the bottom, we can see the first commit. We created a new branch here for the for the uh, for the introductory problems. The introductory problems uh, branch is finished here. Merge into the master branch. Finally, I create the intermediate problems branch here. It is still at says I'm going to delete it now. And then I merge everything back here again. And I need to delete the intermediate uh, problems. OK. 
Okay, it begins here and ends up here. That's it. Where I am, uh, I am on the master branch. It branches. Do you have two? I'm going to delete this one. The name. Uh, git branch. Delete. There we go. The branch has been deleted. Doesn't really matter because all the changes remain on the master branch. There we go. Here's the full history of the solutions here. I'm going to be uploading this uh, repo to GitHub and GitLab. So you may actually see all this, how I've been solving it. So thank you for watching. And I guess we see you later. Git coding, and as you can see, uh, there is a lot of work to be done just to practice something. But I think it's actually worth it. So you are learning to code. I hope you you keep at it. You keep doing the uh, great stuff. And remember, uh, if you get a stock, that's nothing new. Don't feel bad. You are going to be getting a stock a lot. The important thing is to think and think slowly. Okay? So see you later and thanks for coming in.